I'm sorry. I wanted to first apologize that I haven't been around in a while. It's not that I, I haven't say? wanted to be here. Uh, in the last 49 days, I've spent 11 in my own bed because I, I felt like it was really important. You know, we, we had great enthusiasm with the Panhandle, but we weren't going to win some of these statewide races without help in other parts of the state. So I've been in Palm Beach County, Broward County, Volusia County, Hillsborough County, Pinellas County, uh, Orange County, Seminole County. And, uh, and, and I've been uh, trying to work with local media there and help, local, help uh, state legislative candidates really appeal to the, the message that I thought voters wanted to hear. Uh, we had some, some big pickups in those traditionally liberal areas. Uh, also, sorry I'm late tonight, but since I've been away so long, I haven't had dinner with my mother, and I promised I'd take her to dinner, so that was where I was. Um, what, uh, what Tony's helping pass out right now is a memo I received from Speaker of the House, Dean Cannon, today. And I just wanted to, uh, I, I know the time is running short, but I wanted to go over with you some of the votes that I'm going to have to take uh, in about two weeks. And if we don't have time to discuss every issue, my hope is that you can read this and you can always email me. And I'll give you my, not my state email address, but my personal email address is just matt at mattgates.com. So if you have any advice or suggestions about these, uh, these pending matters, I'd very much like your input on them. Um, and the first page of this packet is just a letter from Speaker Cannon. And, and the, kind of the read in between the lines there is very disappointing. He says that this is an exclusive list of things that will be considered. I was hoping that the legislature would consider some economic recovery as a result of the oil spill for Northwest Florida. And the House will not be taking those issues up, much to my uh, dismay. But I wanted to go over just a couple of these. Uh, these are issues largely, the, the first grouping is vetoes, Governor Christ's vetoes that we now have the votes to override, to override these vetoes uh, as our Constitution provides. The first one on the list is, how, and I won't go over every one, but just a few highlights. House Bill uh, 545 regarding residential property sales. Uh, that in Okaloosa was left off the, the list in the effect of the override e explanation. But right now, there's, a, there's an increased government required burden on homeowners to make uh, certain representations regarding windstorm rates that are largely incalculable. And so right now what we've seen is that uh, you could have home buyers, people that could come to Florida uh, sort of due to government being sent away and discouraged from buying in Florida. And so I would, we passed a bill that would have undone that, what I think is a pretty bad law, and uh, the governor vetoed it. I would like to override that veto, but wanted, your, uh, wanted to bring that up and wanted to highlight that for you. If you go down to the bottom of this page two, House Bill 1565 relating to rulemaking. I was the prime sponsor of this legislation uh, in addition to Representative Dorworth from Seminole County. And uh, this was the bureaucrat bill. I've spoken about it with this group actually before. I uh, remember it was the bill that says that if a bureaucratic entity of government, you know, DEP, DCA, all these bureaucrats, if they promulgate a rule that's going to increase compliance costs for businesses over a million bucks in the aggregate, the legislature has to ratify the rule or it's null and void. And the reason is that you can hold me accountable. If I rat vote to ratify a bad bill that keeps businesses out, you can vote against me. You can't vote against the bureaucrat from the Department of Agriculture. And so uh, that bill passed unanimously in the House, unanimously in the Senate. The Sierra Club didn't like it, so they lobbied the governor and he vetoed it. And I'm telling you, this bill will take a meat cleaver to the red tape that is keeping business and keeping jobs away from Florida. And I'm passionate about making it sure that making sure that this gets overridden and is on the override list. But I uh, wanted to let you know we were still working on that because there was a lot of good feedback from this group. Uh, if, you'll, if you'll flip the page, uh, page three, House Bill 5603. One of the big problems that businesses are having now, one of the reasons they're having to shut their doors is the increased cost of workers' compensation. And uh, the governor vetoed a bill that would have done a lot more to move some of that workers' compensation uh, into the private sector and away from really being your burden. And it would, it would have been major cost savings for businesses. The governor vetoed it. I would like to override. Just as a brief aside, I think this will generate momentum for another big priority of mine that I mentioned in the newspaper today. And that is that when people apply for 
uh, welfare in our state, unemployment benefits in our state, or workers' comp, Red. they ought to be drug tested. Yes. 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 And because if someone gets hurt on the job, if someone gets hurt on the job and it was because they were high or stoned, then I don't think we ought to be picking up the tab for them to go sit at the house. Right. And, right. And, and, and so this will generate momentum. If we override right. this veto, it will generate momentum to make sure that it's not just welfare recipients and, and uh, uh, unemployment benefits, but workers' comp benefits that also you have to drug test for. Um, if you'll flip the page to page four, uh, there are two additional issues that are not overrides that are going to be brought up in the special session. Uh, the first is the septic tank mm -hmm. issue, which by the way, thank you very much for really highlighting that. I voted against that bill when it came up in the House. All of the House members of the delegation voted against it. I, didn't, I wasn't able to get a note down to the other chamber, so the other member of my family voted for it negligently, in my view. Shame on him. Shame on him. He, Shame on him. he, he knows better now because he's running the bill to repeal it. But, uh, but, but we're going to need help with this. There's been talk, I've heard of, of, of some folks from our area coming over, and I really encourage that because we, we, you know, we've got to get this on the agenda to repeal those septic tank provisions that are unnecessary government mandates. Happy to talk about that more. The final, the final uh, issue, uh, HVAC and solar rebates, bottom of page four, top of page five, page five. This is one where I am torn on, and I have to tell you, I do not know how I'm going to vote on this. But let me just explain the issue, and you can research it on your own and get back to me and give me your feedback. But, but we talked about it in the past with regarding the solar cells. We made a promise in Florida that if you will go and get solar panels, we will provide you a $10,000 rebate against the cost of installing those solar panels. And we put 25 million bucks in a fund to pay for it. And the program became a victim of its own success. More than, more people wanted it than there was money to pay for it. And so all these people went out, they spent their 10 grand hoping they were going to get it back, and we left them holding the bag. And now they show up in my office and they say, you, the state of Florida, lied to me. And I'm out $10,000. And that's not right. And I don't believe, I believe you ought to keep your word to folks because we didn't fund it back. And that, that, I'm very sympathetic of that. I think that's wrong. Same thing with HVAC. We gave a rebate for HVAC upgrades. I think it was like 2500 And then that program became a victim of its own success. So here's the deal. If we pass the right legislation in special session, we could draw down an extra $31 million in federal money, read stimulus money, to replenish some of those programs and to keep some of the promises that we've made to Floridians. But I have real heartburn about going and holding my hand out to the federal government for more stimulus money. I mean, to me, you know, that, that is the problem. That's why no one's responsible for spending anymore. Because if the states are willing to jump at every carrot that the federal government hangs out there, I can always come back and say, well, I just wanted Florida to get their fair share. And I think that's a defensible position. But it's, it's part of this whole systemic screw-up that we have where no one is responsible for spending anymore at the federal level. And so I have a real problem voting for that if it means drawing down more stimulus money. But I am equally torn that we made promises to people that we haven't kept. And so, uh, you know, I, I know you guys have got a lot on the agenda tonight. And so uh, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it if, if someone had views they wanted to share. But, but if, if you wanted to think about that, like no I need to think about it. Money. No stimulus money. Man, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I felt like a real hypocrite, but I took advantage of the appliance rebate. Mm -hmm. However, you had to go on the line with what you were, what you had, what you were replacing it with, and you were notified right then if there was stimulus money left. I would assume the same type of program existed on the HVA. It did not. Oh, well, well, here's what happened. The, the, there, there are several groups of people in a, well, HVAC and solar. They're very similar in how they're run. There was a group of people that applied and got their money. Then there was a group of people who thought the money was going to be there, applied, and got left holding the bag. But then there's a whole third group of people who were on darn good notice that we were out of money, but who have kept applying, but hoping that the money will eventually be there. I am certainly not as sympathetic as the group in kind of group three. I'm very sympathetic to group two, very sympathetic, because uh, I feel like we have broken our promise to those people, and that's not right. Um, the, the one other thing was the Medicaid uh, memorial. This is yet this is more defense against Obamacare. In Florida, what happens is our Medicaid budget is a huge portion of the budget. It's swallowing our budget, 
And uh, with a fee-for-service system, we incentivize fraud. We essentially incentivize fraud when we say that it's fee-for-service and anyone can get, and it mostly happens in South Florida where, you know, if you're a doctor and one of your buddies has a wheelchair, you know, company, you, that's when you send the one lady 25 wheelchairs and you get a kickback. And